Her name is Melissa Norris. She is a fifth generation homesteader, educator, and author of two books, The Family Garden Plan and Everything Worth Preserving. After a cancer scare in her late 20s, Melissa turned back to her roots of homegrown and home-cooked foods, and she was able to fully heal. She and her husband quickly ramped up the food that they were raising on their small farm, and while still working day jobs, they began to raise grass-fed, grass-finished beef, organic pasture-raised pork, organic pasture-raised chickens, along with over 70% of their own fruits and vegetables for an entire year. Now with Melissa's books, her podcast called Pioneering Today, her Pioneering Today Academy, social media, and her website, melissaknorris.com, she has helped over 1 million people every month. She's helped them live a healthier and homemade life with simple modern homesteading. She's passionate about raising food ethically and regeneratively and bringing back true local food sources into the hands of communities and families. Melissa and her husband purchased a 40 acre farm and founded Norris Farmstead. They have a farm stay and they will be holding monthly classes on the farm from May through October, where they will be teaching live intimate workshops and offering direct to consumer food. Welcome to the program, Melissa. Hey, Sina. Hey, Joel. I'm super excited to be here. I am really thrilled to have you. Joel, as we'll go into, is already buddies with you. This is my first time meeting with you. And I feel like already we're two peas in a pod because we both share a remarkable healing story. And to fully heal, we, we both turn to real food, right? Real food, real nutrition, God's medicine and herbs. I'm really curious. Can you share with us some about your healing journey, because when people hear the word cancer, it elicits fear, right? Because in our culture, cancer is a death sentence. It is not reversible. They help you manage symptoms while the cancer takes over the body and you eventually succumb to it. That was not the case in your, in your situation. How did you go about, after you had the diagnosis, what happened in your mind that instead of following the traditional medical establishment's approach, what happened to say, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go this natural route and I'm gonna trust that I'm gonna be fully healed. Yeah, well, I wanna be really clear. I did not actually have cancer. Um, I had precancerous and some different symptoms. So I'll go into that just a little bit because I don't, I don't want any, I don't want uh, anybody to hear that and think that I actually had cancer because I didn't. Um, what happened is in my late twenties, I had my upper esophagus and, or excuse me, my upper stomach and esophagus biopsied for cancer because I had um, GERD and stomach ulcers at such a severity level that they assumed that it was cancer. And when they went in with the endoscope, there was so much erosion uh, that they're like, we need to biopsy these two spots. So it, when I woke up, they said, we did a biopsy in two spots when they were just supposed to go in and do an endoscope because they ended up by what they they found. So when we got the results back, it was not cancer. It was benign. However, there was a lot of cellular change that was beginning to happen, which is usually your precursor once those cells begin to change uh, to cancer. So for clarification there, and I, I don't actually really believe in luck. I believe in God's, in, in God's providence in his hand. And so the specialist that I happened to get, we live really rurally. So even our specialists have to come in. And so he came into our area two days a month and I happened to get him. And my appointment was on the day that he was in our area. And he was just really blunt. He said, you have to get off of these prescription medications that you're on. So I was on conventional prescription medications. I was a pharmacy tech for 18 years prior to, and in conjunction with doing this. And I was taking them up to six times a day at maximum doses, but they weren't doing anything because I was still having all of this erosion and issues. And he said, I, I really don't know why your doctor has allowed you to be on these that long at these doses, but you need to come off of them. Because if you don't, the next time you're sitting back here in my office, you're probably going to have a cancer diagnosis. So at 29, I had my husband and two kids at home. You know, that's kind of like, oh my gosh. And, and for me, I was like, well, I've done everything conventional medicine says. I still can barely function and I'm having all of these issues. 
I don't know what and to do. I'm sorry to interrupt, Melissa, but to be clear for our listeners, it's not clear to me. I don't want to get too prying, but but the issues were ulcers, ulcers and, and esophagus uh, abrasion of some sort. Yeah. So I'd had so much stomach acid for so long that I had active ulcers and mm. the acid was coming up and was actually beginning to eat away at my esophagus, basically. And it sounds like if you've ever had heartburn before, you're kind of right. like, well, that's not, you know, you're like, well, you know, that's just heartburn. But at the levels I was having it, like I was like size two pants were falling off me. Like I couldn't eat, didn't matter what I ate. Like it was just, it was, it was pretty severe. Um, and so he said, you've got to figure it out by the food you eat. And I'm like, well, how do I, you know, how do you do this? So he gave me this big stack of papers. And I still remember, cause we live very rurally. So I had an hour's drive home and this stack of papers is sitting in, in the car seat beside me and I'm driving home and I'm looking at it. And I knew that I was at this very defining moment. Like, okay, you either figure this out or you're not going to be here to watch these babies grow up and to dance at their weddings and be at their graduations. And so it was a huge motivator. So I, I came home and this was, um, you know, this was like 2010. I mean, we're talking like 13, you know, about 13 years ago. And I just started diving into the internet on dial up really slow <laughs> connection. And I started learning about, you know, genetically modified foods and what high fructose corn syrup and hydrogenated oils like Crisco. And even though I had been cooking from scratch at home, we live so far out, there is no delivery still, you know, I was cooking foods at home, but the base ingredients that I was cooking with, like I said, using vegetable oil to make things and, and, you know, Crisco, um, things that had high fructose corn, so, you know, like that, I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I thought did a massive, I threw everything out. I had to completely go grocery shopping. And I realized at that time with our budget and what was available and actually, you know, people like you guys, our work has really been paying off over the past decade because there's a lot more available to folks today, even in regular big grocery stores of sure. some alternatives than in back then. But at that point I was like, okay, we're going to have to raise more of our food ourselves. We were doing some, but not to the majority we do now. Um, cause I can't find it locally or if I can, I can't afford it. So that was really our, our big catalyst. Um, and then the great news is, is six months of cutting all of that stuff out, just going full board. It took me six months to taper off the medications, um, because they are a taper dose or, or you can actually trigger, um, some pretty severe reactions if you don't taper off of them, but I've never had to go back on them, have been completely healed since then. And it literally was just changing my our food 